Thank you so much for joining me for my 12 Sundays of Christmas series. My name is Sharon Rogers and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And back at the beginning of October, on the first Sunday of the month at 3 p.m., I began this series and we will conclude it a few weeks from now on December 17th. During this series, I will bring you gift packaging ideas or gift ideas perfect for the holiday season. Let's see what we have today. On the ninth Sunday of Christmas, Sharon shared with me a nested treat box decorated for the Christmas holiday. Holds quite a bit of items in here. For instance, here's a jar of embossing powder. Uh, let's see what else might fit in here. Ribbon does not fit in there. You could put in, um, on a diagonal, you could put in a bottle of nail polish. Um, let's see what else I got around here that might fit in. I don't know. Let's see. How about some re-inkers? Uh, yep, they lay on their side. So you could put in, uh, you could put in a couple bottles of re-inkers if you wanted to give this to a crafty friend. Um, I'm guessing it would hold probably Oh, probably 25 to 30 ki Hershey's Kisses anyway. Uh, it's a pretty good size box. So let's see how it's made. Okay, these nested treat boxes come in a package that everything's flat. And there are 16 pieces. The first eight are the front, the ones that have the notch. And the last eight are the ones, I think I have two here. Nope, I guess I have one that do not have any notches in them. This one without the notches is slightly larger, let me compare like ends, slightly larger than the one with the notch. I don't know if you can see that this back piece sticks out over. And that's because this one has to go inside of this one. Now they come together uh, very easily. Um, you don't even really need a bone folder, but I always like to make my box is nice and crisp and let's see here um, is there a shinier side nope so I usually fold against the score lines so away from them and I do that on these pieces as well all right and then you're just going to fold this up. Oops, I guess I forgot this one. And you'll form the box this way. Comes with the adhesive already on it, and it's a very strong adhesive. So when you are lining things up, take the time to make sure it's lined up very nicely because this stuff is very sticky. So I, I hold it back a little bit and line up the edge and then carefully just put that back right up against it. Again, you'll want to move this out of the way a bit so that you can see where the edges are and then you just fold that back up against it. And same thing here. And just take off one adhesive strip at a time. Otherwise, you might end up being sorry. All right, so I have that. And I have my nice little box there. And it's pretty sturdy. This is, this is a chipboard material. It's not a cardstock material. So this is going to hold something that's, that's fairly substantial. Not to mention the fact that there's another box that goes inside. So that will help it hold even more. All right, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to fold. So when you see the dent from the score line, you fold away from the dent. It seems counterintuitive, but that's the way it's done. It should always be folding away from your score lines. All right, so. 
So I think we're good there. And now there are other ways to decorate this. And if you're going to stamp it on this at all or ink it up in any shape or form, you want to do that before you form the box because it's very hard to do anything on the box with it already formed into a box. They're sturdy, but they're not meant for stamping on once they're, once they're already formed into a box. So again, we're just doing the same thing that we did before. Taking one adhesive strip off at a time, bending it back so that I'm just lining up the edges before I stick them down. All right. And then to put this together, you wanna to make sure that this little notch, which is for a finger hold, that is the side that goes in last and it just slides in there okay so let's decorate this now i have a piece of beautiful holly and ivy and fir tree or spruce tree um, paper from the joy of christmas dsp and i'm going to cut that down a little bit now on this particular one, I have, a, I have a choice. I can cover this whole front, but then I have to worry about cutting this piece out. And if you don't want to, to have to cut this piece out, then you need to cut this a little bit smaller so it falls underneath. And I'll show you that in a second. But let's suppose you want to cover the whole front. This is a two and a half inch square box. So you would cut a piece of designer series paper that is two and a half by two and a half. And I'm doing that off camera because you know how to do it. So I have so I have this. So I'm lining this up on the box. Don't adhere it yet. And then I'm gonna trace right around here. Now it's gonna be easier for me to trace if I'm on a flat surface. All right. So see, now I, now I can see because I had a working pen and I will just carefully trim around that with my scissors. This is a one inch in diameter circle, a half circle. So if you had a one inch punch, you could do it that way as well. I just wanna make sure you've got it centered. So there we have that front piece. Now, alternatively, you could just take something that's a little bit smaller. So if it's two, if it is um, two and a half inches from here to here, and this is half an inch because it's a half a circle, then I could cut something a little bit less than two inches. I'm gonna go with one and three quarters. And I could just place that right here. And then I don't have to worry about this top part. But I think I'm going to opt for this full size piece. And when I'm adhering my glue, I don't want to get too much to the edge. Now, if you um, have a different adhesive that's not glue based, so glue eats can sometimes eek out or you know get goopy um, then you know your tape runner will certainly work well in this but my glue i did not put in so much that it's going to seep out the edges and i might even just flip it over and just pat it down like that and so now i have the front of that box done now what to do on the outside of the box you can do the same thing on the outside of the box if you want to. You can either cut two and a half inch squares or you can just take a two and a half inch um, outside piece. And if you look in this, if you look in this designer series paper set, 
there's there are some other options here this is a really really pretty option that could go around the backs the outside of it hmm i kind of like that you know what let's do that i'm gonna cut that at two and a half inches maybe i'm gonna go a little bit more than two and a half just because there's the edges of the box that we formed all right so that's better okay so we could just wrap this around and glue it. And when I do that, I'm just pressing here to form those corners. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom and I will adhere it to itself there on the bottom. And again, go ahead and press those corners. And when you add some glue in here, I do like to, to put my glue near the edge. That will help make sure it doesn't lift up on the edge. And maybe I'll put a little bit in the middle here too. All right, so there's the top of the box. We're gonna go back here and because I've already made these folds, it's got some memory here. And we'll just form that right around, stick it right around the edge there. And then do the other side as well. And here we go. Got a little bit of glue seeping out all over my, well, this one that was on my thumb was because I touched the touch the inside part anyways and I think I scraped it out so that's why it was touching there. I'll just make sure the glue is sticking along these edges. All right. All right. So there I have my box and then I just need to maybe put on some decorative ribbon. I need to do something here in the front. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of a decoration. All right, let's bring in the Brightest Glow stamp set, and it has this beautiful joy on it. I'm gonna get that out, and we're going to emboss this on, uh, on cardstock, and in this paper, there are two colors of red basically going on. There is real red, and there's also cherry cobbler, and because this has a it just feels more cherry cobbler than red to me that's the cardstock color that i'm going to select to emboss on i have all sorts of scraps of cherry cobbler so you see how that night that goes very nicely here the real red does as well by the way i'm going to get out my versamark ink up my joy now i want to uh, especially because it's getting towards Staticky season, aka winter. I'm gonna use my embossing buddy to just take off some of the static and the oils from my fingers since I was grabbing that at random out of a scrap bin. Put my joy right there. Get my white embossing powder out. My embossing toolkit comes with this nice little tray to catch everything. Comes with an embossing buddy that you just saw me use. Okay, that looks well, looks like I missed a little spot there, so put back on. All right, looks nice and clean. I can just funnel this right back in here. does come with a, a brush as well but also comes with these reverse tweezers and to get these to work you just squeeze them and you can pick this up and now you can hold this the end is heat resistant so you can hold this without burning yourself so remember when you're embossing you're going to just aim it at the embossing powder it'll take a second for this to warm up 
So if you're doing multiple embossings, once it's warmed up, it's warm. And then you just hold it over here. And when you start to see the embossing turn bright and shiny like it is right now, you move to a new spot. And once it's all bright and shiny white, you're done. Don't overheat it because you'll melt that plastic embossing powder right into the paper and then it will no longer feel raised. And the raised part is what is kind of magical about it. I'm gonna take my double oval punch and punch my joy out of it here. So let me just see if I can get that straight. I do like to generally start with a larger piece because otherwise it's hard to get these little scraps out. There we go. All right. So now we can just put that right there with some dimensionals. Easy peasy. Now, if you have the bow punch, which I think is in sh in uh, low inventory, cuts out this little piece, and you can use that as an accent behind the joy if you wanted. I think I like it on this side. Just something to add a little bit of extra, extra something. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to let most of it dangle free. Not all of it. But put those two pieces down there. And then I'm going to bring in some dimensionals from my Joy for the front of the box. We'll put that right there. And if you do not like the stem sticking down below, you can kind of cut that off. I kind of like it. You could add some bling here if you wanted to. If you wanted to add another another bow, you could, bow you could as well. A little bit harder after it's after it's all stuck down with dimensionals. But what you can do is you can cheat and you can tear some of it off and just put more of it in there if you like a little bit more. Now I don't I don't think I want more of it to stick out like that. So I think I'm just gonna call that good. But you can put as much or as little on it as you want. Now I've got some garden green ribbon and this is from a two pack of ribbon from the mini catalog. And uh, it comes like this, and it is called the Real Red and Garden Green 3 8 inch Ribbon Combo Pack. This is a really nice light ribbon. I've got about 24 inches of it here. I'll just wrap that right around the top and tie it in a bow. And that will complete my little box. Pretty simple, pretty simple to do. All right, and you can trim my ends or you can let your ends kind of uh, dangle down or out. But that is your box. Easy access, even though it's wrapped. Holds a, a good amount of candy or other treats that you might have baked. And that is our ninth Sunday of Christmas. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I've enjoyed making it for you. Remember the nested treat boxes like most of the products from the September to December 2023 Stampin' Up! mini catalog will be retiring shortly. So if this is something that you want to add to your collection, now's the time to order it. Also, um, things are going up, going fast, so make sure that if there's something that you love in that mini catalog, you grab it before it's gone. Now, one thing that's not going away, and it will be coming back in a future catalog, I'm guessing the next fall catalog, um, you will find the Merriest Trees Bundle. 
and I created this little treat holder just a couple Sundays ago with it. Holds a bunch of little Hershey Kisses, but these little trees are great, and I love this bundle so much. I'm so glad that it is being carried over. So I hope you will join me on um, Tuesday, this Tuesday, for my Tune In Tuesday class featuring this bundle. And don't forget, I'll be also live on Friday night, and then, of course, next Sunday for another 12 Sundays of Christmas Project. Have a great week, everyone.